Today we're talking about the much anticipated A7 IV, and ever since this was announced, it's been getting a lot of criticism about some of its shortcomings. So today, once and for all, we're gonna decide, is this camera worth complaining about? Or are we just expecting too much of cameras these days? In this video, I'll be tackling five of the biggest complaints I've seen people make about this camera, including myself, and we'll give it a rating out of 10 on the disappointment meter. So let's get started. Number one is the lack of dual CF Express card slots. Honestly, I thought I was gonna hate this, you know, because Sony's got this brand new system where they have CF Express and SD in like the same card slot. It's great, all rainbows and sunshine, but then we only have one card slot on here. So I really thought I was gonna hate this a lot. That changed as soon as I saw the price of a CF Express card. For about 80 gigs, you're paying about $300. And if you're shooting all intro on this camera, that's gonna last you less than an hour. So if you want the 160 gig, you're paying about 500 bucks. So pretty much as soon as I saw that, I was all of a sudden okay with just the dual SD card slots. And honestly, it's not that big a deal because it's not like Sony is locking you out of any mode if you don't have CF Express. The only mode that I could find that you couldn't record with SD cards is the all intro 4K60. I mean, you can still record the 4K60, you just have to use the XAVC-S or the XAVC-HS. Those two modes will record 4K60 just fine on just SD card slots. I'm very happy that Sony isn't making us buy CF Express cards just to use the 10-bit options. They could have easily done that, especially because they're gonna be the ones who are profiting off of it most because they're the ones selling the CF Express Type A cards mainly. There are other options, but the Sony Tough cards are like the most popular one. So they could have easily, you know, charged us more and made a profit off of us, but they chose not to do that. And you can use this camera pretty much exclusively just with SD cards. So overall, this gets a one out of 10 on the disappointment meter from me at least. I mean, huge respect to Sony. They're not making us buy the CF Express cards, but at least it's an option if you want. To. Next up, we have no external RAW. And honestly, I was pretty bummed out about this because I do own a Ninja 5, that's what I'm using to record right now. And this thing does ProRes RAW, 4K 60 frames a second. So as soon as I found out the specs for the A7 IV, I was super excited to see if I could take advantage of RAW video. Unfortunately, it doesn't do that. But then I took a step back and thought of it from like a corporation's point of view, and they already have like a pro body in their mirrorless lineup. That's the A7S III, which is doing very well in terms of sales. So they're trying to make a little brother to that camera without driving sales away from the big brother and also not undermining the little brother. So this camera is meant for hybrid shooters. So Sony's pretty much just sitting there trying to, you know, decide which features can they get rid of to justify the price tag of the A7S III. And I feel like getting rid of external RAW is one of those things because most hybrid shooters don't care. I mean, I'm not really a hybrid shooter, that's why I care, but again, I'm not part of Sony's target audience. For somebody like me, they want me to spend the extra money and buy the A7S III because, you know, that's where all the professional features are. So I can't really get mad, so I'm gonna give this a two out of 10 on the disappointment level, and let me know what you think about that in the comments down below. Next up, we have the lack of 240 frames a second at 1080. I mean, I was really expecting this camera to be able to do super slow motion, but it doesn't. Its 1080 recordings are exactly the same as the a7 III, which is 1080 up to 120 FPS. But of course, now it's at 10 bit. Coming from the a7 III, it's not the biggest thing in the world if it can't do higher frame rates, but considering how good the 1080p files are on these cameras now, I mean, it would have been nice to see super slow motion. It really does help in specific scenarios, especially if you're shooting product video. I mean, 240 frames would have been great. But honestly, I can't really give it more than like a two and a half out of 10 on the disappointment meter because it's such a niche scenario that I feel like most of the people buying this camera wouldn't really care. 120 frames a second is pretty good in like 95% of situations. Next up, we have 4K60 with the crop. So obviously, that's the elephant in the room. It was for me at least when I made my original reactions video, which I'll link at the end of this video if you wanna check that out. But 4K60 with the crop, I mean, that was rumored for quite some time, the fact that it was gonna have 4K60 before the camera was launched. But honestly, I don't think anybody really expected it to have a crop, especially because this is supposed to compete directly with the Canon R6, and that can do 4K60 at full frame. So that's kind of the reasoning why nobody expected it and it kind of just came out of the blue with the crop. But honestly, after using this camera for a little bit, I still hate it. I mean, it's not fun at all. I mean, you really feel the crop at 4K60. But honestly, at this point, I've pretty much just accepted that I'm not gonna be getting wide angle shots if I'm shooting 4K60 with this camera. 
I mean, what are you gonna do, right? That's like the bottom line here. Yeah, so there's no real sugar coating it. 4K60 with the crop, not fun at all. So I'm gonna give it a four out of 10 on my disappointment meter. And it's not higher for two reasons. Number one, it's technically a workaround. You can film in 1080 and kind of, you know, upscale and with how good the 1080 files are. Most people won't be able to tell. But again, I would like to use 4K60 with a crop, so that's not the perfect workaround. And the second reason is that there's actually something I have a bigger problem with than the 4K60 crop, and that's the rolling shutter. So the rolling shutter, in my opinion, is this camera's Achilles heel. I was expecting it to be a much bigger improvement over the a7 III, but it's pretty much exactly the same. I mean, there have been plenty of times where I wished my camera had better rolling shutter, and there's pretty much nothing you can do about that. It hasn't really held me back per se, because most clients don't care, they don't notice, but I personally do notice it quite a bit. There have been few shots that have been ruined with bad rolling shutter, especially on my a7 III. And with this getting the exact same rolling shutter, I'm not super thrilled about that. And on top of all of that, I mean, I've been spoiled with all the FX3 and the A7S3 reviews, you know, always everybody's bragging about the rolling shutter performance. So I must admit, I set my expectations pretty high for this one. But in all honesty, if all your work is pretty much shooting fast moving subjects, this camera is definitely not for you. So overall, rolling shutter ranks highest in terms of disappointment for me with the a7 IV, so I'm gonna give it a six out of 10, mainly because it's most noticeable from like a final product's point of view, and it's what holds this camera back from being a true pro body. Now, down to the final conclusion. Does this camera deserve the criticism that it's getting? And I would say, yeah. I mean, there's no such thing as a perfect camera, and this one is in it either. I mean, personally, I'm at least affected by three of the five categories I mentioned. So yeah, I do think it deserves some of the criticism that it's getting, but the keyword there is some. All of those shortcomings don't really hold this camera back from being an amazing tool for filmmakers. It still provides incredible value. I mean, no camera is above criticism, and I actually think it's healthy for Sony to get some backlash about this camera, it's only gonna encourage them to make the next iteration even better. For you personally, you just have to consider, for the price, are those shortcomings really gonna stand in the way of you creating amazing content with this camera? For me personally, I don't think it will. This is an amazing camera that provides incredible value and without a doubt should and probably will be the main camera in a hybrid shooter's kit. All right, so that's about it for me today. If this video brought value to you, don't forget to leave it a thumbs up before you leave and subscribe for more A7 IV content in the future. Again, thanks for watching, take care.